In this episode, a seemingly docile lioness attacks a vehicle in South Africa's Lion Park. The visitor is completely defenseless against one of Africa's most dangerous predators. This is the horrifying attack on Catherine Chapel by a lion. But why did the lion attack, and can she escape? We will find answers to this and other questions in the video. Welcome to Wild Assault. Catherine Chapel worked in the film industry as a special effects editor. Game of Thrones, Captain America, Divergent, and Godzilla are included on her lengthy list of achievements. However, she also had a passion outside of the film industry. This involved the preservation of wildlife. She was intent on assisting wildlife specialists in the vast South African bush. A few months before her trip to South Africa, she created a GoFundMe page for Conservation Group Wildlife Act. She announced on social media that she would be assisting with animal tracking and monitoring, participating in anti-poaching techniques, assisting veterinarians, and relocating game. It was to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. In June of 2015, she visited South Africa. Her primary interest during work breaks was volunteering in one of the game reserves. She also hoped to produce a film about animal poaching in the near future. This was also research for her upcoming project. She flew from Canada to South Africa via London. Catherine arranged a visit to Lion Park in Gauteng, Johannesburg, in addition to her conservation work in South Africa, where she stayed in a guest house in the suburb of Melville during her trip there. She had posted photos of herself, imbibed refreshing cocktails, and commented on how inexpensive the food was in Joburg during her visit to Lion Park. She chose to be guided by Calabash Tours, a tour operator. The owner of the tour company, Pierre Potgieter, was her guide for the day. He was a guide with 66 years of experience who was born and raised in South Africa. The park reportedly contained a 20-acre enclosure that housed 85 lions. John Legend and Shakira are among the celebrities who have previously visited this location. As cars enter the park, they can get up close and personal with one of South Africa's top predators. Numerous warning signs instruct motorists to remain in their vehicles with the doors and windows closed and locked. However, people do not always follow the rules, and this is the result. Catherine may have been a genius behind the camera and on the special effects computer, but she did not exhibit any signs of genius upon entering the Lion Park in Johannesburg. Entering the Lion Enclosure after passing through the tall metal gates, Catherine could almost immediately see the resident lions. The majority were lying on the grass and soaking up the sun. They appeared submissive and tame. These lions, however, were anything but. They may not have had the freedom to roam in the vastness of Kruger National Park in South Africa. However, they were not tame. One can remove an animal from the wild, but one cannot remove the wild from the animal. A male and female lion slept soundly at the edge of the cliff. Pierre drew alongside them in his car. Catherine was prepared with her camera. Immediately after he stopped the 4x4, she began taking photographs. They were only inches away from the animals as she zoomed in on them with her camera lens. Catherine had a keen eye for the smallest of details. As they perspired in the afternoon sun, the fine fur on their muscles, the dark brown eyes, and the white canine teeth stood out. Catherine instinctively wound down the window to get a clearer shot while doing so. The faces of the lions came into focus. She was astounded by their beauty, graceful presence, and serene demeanor. However, this disposition was about to change. The female lioness rose to her feet, her enormous forepaws flexed on the soft ground. She yawned, exposing her teeth with her upper lip. She then turned to face Catherine. Catherine continued to take photographs throughout. They were flawless shots. The park was crowded with visitors. Behind Catherine and Piers's car, a line of cars waited for their turn to view the lions, only feet from their vehicles. The cameras immediately behind Piers, however, detected Catherine's open window and protruding black camera lens. The lioness could be seen approaching the vehicle, while the young woman did nothing. Perhaps she was unable to see it. Possibly, she was preoccupied with the male lion at the time. One eye was closed, while the other was focused on the male's spectacular mean. Perhaps Catherine was unaware of the imminent danger she faced. Concerned for the woman's safety, the other drivers began honking their horns. Catherine and Peter were not alarmed by the honking of the horns. It failed to discourage the approaching lioness. Instead, the female jumped onto the SUV, her front paws latching onto the metal, her entire body weight pushing against the vehicle. Catherine jumped backwards but had nowhere to go. She struggled to fasten her seatbelt. 
She had not anticipated the lion to leap up in such a manner. Now she was confronted by the predator. She detected its breath. She stared straight into its eyes. When the lion stood on her hind legs, she was nearly as tall as the 4x4. A monstrously powerful creature with a thousand-year-old killing instinct and an incredibly muscular body. Catherine was unable to shut the window. This would necessitate leaning toward the lion. To reach the button, she would need to push the creature's head back out the window. Catherine's heart pounded violently within her chest. She felt adrenaline coursing through her body and pondered what action to take. In spite of this, she did not believe the animal would attack in those first few seconds. The tranquil atmosphere of the park. The lion's docile appearance gave her a false sense of security. The lionesses had nearly occupied the entire window. It was much larger in person than Catherine had ever imagined. It paused for a few seconds in the window. It was analyzing the situation and making sense of the individuals in the car. The lioness lunged at Catherine a fraction of a second later. The 29-year-old woman screamed as the lion wrapped its jaws around her shoulder and neck. Blood vessels were severed as the sharp canines tore into her flesh. Pierre leant over Catherine. He desperately attempted to strike the lioness to drive her away, but she was too powerful. She was too strong. The lioness tore Catherine's shoulder and neck apart before leaping from the vehicle. Fresh blood was dripping from its mouth, and its muzzle was wet with red. The male lion stood up, but the surrounding lions did not react. They were immobile. They had just witnessed the attack made by the female. A few seconds later, it was over. But to their horror, the attack continued. The female decided to strike again. This time, she passed away by the window. Her head was pressed against the car's dashboard. She grabbed Catherine once more and tore at her face for less than a minute before retreating. The lioness had caused the young American girl catastrophic injuries. Pierre used his phone to call for assistance and attempted to staunch the bleeding. A sense of impending doom built up in his chest like a crushing weight. However, he persevered despite the excruciating pain gripping his chest. He exerted force on Catherine's neck. As Catherine was being extracted from her vehicle and laid on the ground, additional personnel arrived at the scene. Pierre yelled for their assistance in administering first aid. However, the employee appeared to be in a state of shock. They hesitated, unwilling to become involved, causing Catherine to lose precious seconds. Pierre felt that an eternity had passed before an ambulance arrived. However, it was too late. Catherine was unable to be revived by paramedics because she had lost too much blood. There was no recourse available. Her sister describes her as fearless. It appears that Catherine had a thirst for adventure and was eager to try new things. His boyfriend wept at her funeral service, referring to their final conversation, in which he cautioned her to be cautious and reminded her that she is a city girl. Pierre was heartbroken. In fact, after patching up his severely bitten arm, doctors at the hospital confirmed he had suffered a heart attack at the time of the lion attack. His heart was the source of the intense pain in his chest, but he bravely fought through it to protect his client. After the incident, questions were naturally raised about Pierre and his company, Calabash Tours.